In this video, I'd like to start to talk about clustering. This will be exciting because this is our first unsupervised learning algorithm where we learn from unlabeled data instead of from labeled data. So what is unsupervised learning? I briefly talked about unsupervised learning at the beginning of the class, but it's useful to contrast it with supervised learning. So here's a typical supervised learning problem where we're given a labeled training set and the goal is to find the decision boundary that separates the positive labeled examples and the negative labeled examples. So the supervised learning problem in this case is given a set of labels to fit a hypothesis to it. In contrast, in the unsupervised learning problem, we're given data that does not have any labels associated with it. So we're given data that looks like this. Here's a set of points and then no labels. And so our training set is written just x1, x2, and so on up to xm, and we don't get any labels y, and that's why the points plotted up on the figure don't have any labels with them. So in unsupervised learning, what we do is we give this sort of unlabeled training set to an algorithm, and we just ask the algorithm, find some structure in the data for us. Given this data set, one type of structure we might have an algorithm find is that it looks like this data set has points grouped into two separate clusters. And so an algorithm that uh, finds clusters like the ones I've just circled is called a clustering algorithm. And uh, this will be our first type of unsupervised learning, although there will be other types of unsupervised learning algorithms that we'll talk about later that finds other types of structure or other types of patterns in the data other than clusters. We'll talk about this after we've, we've talked about clustering. So what is clustering good for? Early in this class, I've already mentioned a few applications. One is market segmentation, where you may have a database of customers and want to group them into different market segments. So you can uh, sell to them separately or serve your different market segments better. Social network analysis, um, there are actually you know, groups that have done this. Uh, things like looking at um, a group of people's uh, social networks, so things like Facebook, Google+, or maybe information about who are the peop people that you email the most frequently and who are the people that they email the most frequently, and to find coherent groups of people. So this would be another maybe clustering algorithm where you, know, you want to find who are the coherent groups of friends in a social network. Here's something that one of my friends actually worked on, which is um, use clustering to organize compute clusters or to organize data centers better, because uh, if you know which computers in the data center and the cluster tend to work together, you can use that to reorganize your resources and uh, how you lay out its networks and how you design your data center and communications. And lastly, something that actually another friend worked on, um, using clustering algorithms to understand galaxy formation and using that to understand how um, to understand astronomical data. So that's clustering, which is our first example of an unsupervised learning algorithm. In the next video, we'll start to talk about a specific clustering algorithm.